The center shaft of the orrery um, is a 3 8 inch piece of, of brass tubing. Um, it's, it's hollow because there are going to be other shafts inside it, but the, this is the outermost one. It's 3 eighths of an inch and some of the gears and some of the uh, arms that hold the idler gears need to be locked so that they won't rotate on the shaft. Now, normally you would do this by um, taking a flat end mill and milling a, a slot here and then uh, broaching the gears which cuts a square um, keyhole. What I'm going to do instead is use a, a round bottom end mill uh, that matches the diameter of what I'm going to use, the key, which is a 332nd diameter rod. Um, so the process is the same, it's just that I'm using round stock as the key uh, rather than square stock. Um, the other nice thing is instead of using a brooch to make the slot on the gear, I can just use a 332nd end mill and um, you know, just cut half the diameter of the rod. So half the diameter will be in the gear, the other half will be in here. It's the same process, I just find it's a simpler way to do it. What I need to do first is align my I'm going to need two vices to do this, to hold this 12 inch rod, <laughs> and they need to be aligned. So, I begin just by making them square to the table. So what I've done is I've built this um, simple bracket here that mounts to the side of my uh, spindle. It's got a hole cut in the top that fits over the the pulley shaft and I can simply squeeze this down on the shaft so that now the, uh, the now the spindle won't turn and that's very important because when we start jogging back and forth even if the spindle were to turn just a hair it would throw off the measurement um, so now I'm going to jog Put some load on this, set it to zero. And now just go back and forth and see how I'm doing. I'm off by about five thousandths. So Zero it. And I'm a very lucky guy today. That's perfect. Now I need to mount a second vise. And what I do just to get it, again, we're just trying to get it close initially. As I take a piece of, um, this is a ground piece of aluminum, which is actually one of my milling plates. Because it's ground and, and flat, this is going to get this jaw, or this entire vise, to 
very close to being aligned with this one. <clears throat> so now I've secured both of the vices. This one we've already gotten right, so I brought the indicator back down to um, re-zero it. So now as I traverse this vise, the indicator stays at zero. So now we're going to come over to this one, and I don't want to uh, bang the indicator, so I'm just going to lift it out a bit until I get here. And now I come take a look across this vise, and I can see that it's it's three thousandths. It, it, it is square, but it's three thousandths further back than this one. So I'm just going to try to. It's very close now. And now it's dead on. Now I'm going to use some, some parallels here to, to support the, uh, the rod. Like that. Just pulling down with pressure, I'm just going to snug these both up. And that's it. I can see if the indicate if the parallels don't move. I'm setting them at an angle this way so that I'm sure that I'm hitting the bottom of the, of the rod. So both of the parallels are locked. Since the table is square here, this should be square to the mill. Alright, now I've removed the, uh, the indicator and I've replaced it with an edge finder. I'm sure you know how these work. Um, spindle going at a very low speed. I'm now going to jog the y-axis in a positive direction. And we just hit. So I'm just going to use an MDI command um, to jog to one half the diameter of this rod. So the rod is 37.375 in diameter. I just jog to Y. 0.1875. So now we are directly along, the spindle is directly along the center line. Um, 332nd inch round over um, end mill. It's in a collet. It's already at the center point. We did that. So now what I do to find the zero, the Z zero point. So I use a piece of paper. This is cigarette rolling paper, and it's left over from the 60s. But the only reason 
I use this is because it's exactly a one thousandth of an inch thick. So now I just jog down one thousandth at a time. As soon as the paper grabs right there, I have found Z0. So I go back to my control software, zero it, and now I know where zero is. That. And then for a sanity check, I always run to the other end. Well, I know it's a 12 inch rod. And, uh, and I check that point because the way I do this, I like to run just slightly over each edge. Because we only want to go half the depth. So that's 0.046. And I'm not going to go fully half because the wall on this tube is only 0.06. Um, so what I'm going to do is go a little shallower than half and I'll compensate for that in the key I cut in the gear because it really doesn't um, it really doesn't matter as long as the as long as this entire rod can fit in the mate between the slot here and the slot in the parts that are going to slide over here um, it'll work. My first pass I'm going to be very conservative. I'm just going to um, drop down about five thousandths of an inch, which is very conservative, I admit. But, um, and then using MDI, I'm going to type in a command to go over, over to X12.2, and I'm going to try a feed rate of 4. So let's see what happens. And that's giving us a beautiful cut. It's very conservative, I know, but I'm in no hurry. I'd rather get this right than save a few minutes. I'm making the final pass now at a depth of 0 0.042. Uh, I made each successive pass, dropping down uh, six thousandths of an inch. It's giving me a beautiful cut. It took, I guess this is the seventh pass. I know a lot of you are much more aggressive than I am and would have done this in one or two passes, but this is a relatively new hobby for me. And like I said before, I'd rather be accurate than, than fast. Um, but the cut is absolutely beautiful. Um, I added a little bit of lubricant, um, cutting oil, on the last couple of passes. Um, usually you cut brass dry, but I experimented a little bit and I am getting a slightly smoother cut uh, with the lubricant in there. And uh, the key fits beautifully in that slot.